Hi, this is Wiz. Welcome to my channel. I hope you are all doing well in these travel days. I'm driving today one of the most controversial Audis these last years. This is the facelift Audi S5. Why controversial? You may know if you are an Audi fan that uh, when Audi introduced the facelifted version of the S4 and S5, they just decided to drop the 3-liter petrol engine and go with the 3-liter turbo diesel engine. Is it still an S model? Can we call this a sporty version of the Audi A5? We're gonna find out now. Let's get this done. Let's start with a quick external review of this S5. If you want to see more about it, just have a look at the video I did a couple of months ago about this same S5. I'll put the link somewhere on the screen. The 2020 edition comes with a revised headlight with a different LED signature. This specific model has the laser matrix headlights. Then the new front grille that is wider and lower compared to the previous version. I like how Audi introduced the Onecom grille pattern also on the S5 and even on the regular A5 model. So now all A5, S5 looks almost like an RS5. If we move on the rear, we have a different tail lights. Still the quad exhaust pipes, but this is where the controversy begin. Because as you may know, on this side there are real exhausts. But if we move on the other side, those two are fake. What do you think about it? Honestly, I can understand why Audi moved to the uh, turbo diesel engine on the S5, but what I don't get is why putting those four exhausts and have half of them being fake. I know that all S models have historically four exhaust pipes, but I would have more understand in this specific situation that Audi just decide to put two exhausts on one side, or at least if you make four, make them real. Different rear bumper, also the side skirts are different. And that's about it. Those are the main changes on the facelift Audi S5 and A5 for that matter, compared to the existing model. As I said, the major change is under the hood. Gone is the 3 liter 6 cylinder petrol engine with 354 horsepower and 500 Newton meters of torque, and it is replaced by the 6 cylinder 3 liters diesel engine, turbo diesel engine actually, which produces 347 horsepower and 700 Newton meters of torque. And keep in mind that this change is only for European market. All other markets still get the old petrol engine. Obviously, we lost a little bit of the sound of the petrol engine and I'm sure you all wanna hear this turbo diesel Audi S5. Let's do this.
as you could hear, don't expect a sport sound coming out of the turbo diesel S5. In that regard, the old S5 was way, way better. I really have mixed feelings about this car. It isn't by any means a bad car. It's a very good one. It's a good Audi. But is it an S model? Aesthetically, yes, of course. It has all the styling codes of an S model. The quad exhaust, the S line exterior package, the S5 logo, but that engine, that engine. Let's now have a look at the interior. Again, if you wanna have a more detailed view of the interior, just go to my video I did a couple of months ago. Same car. So main change is the new layout for the virtual cockpit. Let's turn it on. I like it, it's very modern. And then also another controversial change, the new updated MMI with the touch screen. So gone is the uh, scroll wheel, replaced by, by this uh, useless storage. Actually not that useless because, oh, this is the remote control for the preheating. It's the first time I see one in real. A lot of people are actually missing the scroll wheel because Obviously, having to manage with a touch screen, it is more distracting. Other than that, it is the exact same cabin as the pre-facelift version. So what do you think about it? Do you prefer the big touch screen? Do you prefer the new virtual cockpit layout? Or are you still a fan of the old one? The main reason of this video, it is actually to drive the car and to understand if Audi did a good move by ditching the petrol engine in favor of the turbo diesel engine. So let's do this and find out. We start first on comfort mode. As usual with Audi, when you're in comfort mode, this is an A5. It's very comfortable, very smooth enough power and you should be happy with this I say that because most of the time when I own an S and actually an RS5 I constantly ask myself wouldn't I be equally happy with an A5 a powerful A5 S line part of me think that I would and the other part of me obviously think that I wouldn't because you miss that little S or RS here and there and there and everywhere in the car. <laughs> and also driving the car at the actual speed limit, uh, it's plenty enough. I'm actually at the speed limit on this road, so why having a 450 horsepower car to drive it exactly the same way? And this is the reason why I'm thinking more and more when I will be selling the RS5 to get a proper sport car, even if it's a second-hand one, and a shitty daily. <laughs> a sports car that I would use only on weekend or to go to a specific places to mountain pass. Sometimes I ask myself what's the purpose of having a car like this for everyday drive. But that's not the purpose of this video. <laughs> the purpose of this video is for me to hopefully give you my thoughts on this S5 turbo diesel. <laughs> Let's move now on dynamic. In dynamic, as usual, everything gets stiffer. 
the suspensions, the steering wheel, the throttle response is more, uh, is quicker. You don't hear that much the uh, diesel engine. The, the cabin is very well insulated. So I would say this is not an issue. The engine sound into the cabin isn't an issue. Contrary to my RS5, the S5 remains quite civilized, even in dynamic mode. If you watch my videos about the RS5, whenever I put it on dynamic, the suspensions, the DRC, dynamic ride control, get so stiff that it becomes annoying. And most of the time I drive individual with the suspension set on comfort. It is not the case on the S5, it remains a very civilized drive. Just for your information, um, talking about the current COVID situation, in Switzerland we are not forced to stay confined. We are asked to do that, but we are not forced. So it is absolutely legal for me to be out driving this car with no specific purposes, except the one to hopefully please you. I move now on manual, because I'm about to hit one of my favorite portions. There's nobody behind me, so I can stop the car and do a, a launch control. Actually, quite a lot of traffic. It is quite reactive, but you always have to keep in mind if you are switching gears manually that you need to do it before 5000 RPM. This engine being a diesel. But in manual, it's gone third gear now. I'm at 60 kilometers an hour. 50 now and I floor it except that little gap at the beginning the car is reactive you feel the 700 Newton meters of torque if you go in automatic then whenever you hit the throttle you have that little delay for the gearbox to switch gears I would now really love to drive, to test drive the A550 TDI with the same engine with 286 horsepower and if I'm not mistaken 620 Newton meters of torque 0 to 100 in 5.2 seconds as opposed to 4.7 on this one because I really would like, I'm curious to see what's the difference between those two cars. Because obviously the A5 would cost way less. And let's be honest, if you take an A550 TDI with the full S-Line package, you end up having almost this car. Dynamically, dynamic, <laughs> dynamic, 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 dynamically, dynamically. <laughs> okay, I give up. <laughs> We're driving now the S5 on the freeway, the autobahn. This is what this S5 is meant for. Actually, we're not in the Autobahn, we are in Switzerland, so I will have to carefully respect the speed limitation. But so far, what I can say about this S5 with the uh, turbo diesel 3 liters engine is that it drives beautifully on the freeway, as you would expect. The main purpose of this car is to be driven, to be driven on freeway mainly. So, on that regard, it does its job very well. 
you don't hear very much the engine when you are cruising at 120 and there's no vibration whatsoever in the cabin so I would say that uh, driving this car if you drive this car mostly on a freeway then this car is perfect and you can really feel the 700 newton meters of torque whenever you need power whenever you need to speed up then it goes it just goes driving the S5 on the freeway you will probably forget that you are driving a turbo diesel car if you are worried about that <laughs> if you are not then that's okay I'm currently in comfort mode let's move on dynamic and then on dynamic mode everything gets stiffer so whenever you need that extra punch you just go you just have that little very little delay because the gearbox needs to go down one gear and then push it let's try this I'm gonna go at 100 kilometers an hour and then I just kick down I'm in dynamic gearbox is in 8 speed let's go now we switch to fourth gear and I'm already way higher than I should be again we know that turbo diesel engine does very well in these driving conditions so what are my final thoughts about this 2020 facelift Audi S5 with the turbo diesel mild hybrid engine obviously it's a very good car now it is still an S Audi I would say no if you ask me this is more of a glorified A550 TDI I would call this car an A550 TDI plus or an A555 TDI but I wouldn't call this car an actual S5 I know that a lot of people especially in Germany are saying that this is the perfect daily but so it is an A5 TDI why should you spend more money and buy an S5 now if you can have almost the same experience spending much less money so this is the question I would ask myself should I be on the market for an S5 keeping in mind that I owned the previous S5 the pre facelift one still B9 generation with the petrol engine I was delighted with the car with that car let me just quickly switch second gear and go and let's try here there's nobody so let's turn the traction control completely off there you go quick no one can deny that this car is quick but again no emotions no sound so I was saying if I compare this car let's put let's put the traction control on again if I compare this version with the pre facelift one that I owned I would prefer a thousand time more the petrol one of course because that was a real S this isn't in my opinion and again don't get me wrong if you still want to have an S5 and you need a car to be a good daily because you are driving it almost on a freeway doing a lot of kilometers but you want to have the S model then this is the car for you but if you don't care about having an S5, you just want an Audi A5 generation, then consider taking the 50 TDI instead, or the TFSI. Here in Switzerland, the most powerful TFSI engine in an A5 
would deliver 245 horsepower, which could be plenty enough for most of the people. It's a dilemma, if you ask me. But me personally, again, I wouldn't buy this car. Not with a diesel engine, and that's the reason why I also wouldn't buy an S6, I wouldn't buy an S7. And especially that exhaust situation is really weird. I couldn't live knowing that two of my exhaust pipes are fake. And you can see them, especially on winter time, when you have smoke coming out of the pipes, then it would be just ridiculous. <laughs> I'm gonna take a little moment now to answer some question I got through my Instagram. If you are not following me already, please do it, Wiz1972. If you wanna know the latest and greatest news about myself, what I'm into it, uh, whether it's cars, tech, or some other lifestyle, just give me a follow, please. Give me some love, I need it. So, let's start with the question. So, Green Thumbs says, this car kills me. I can't imagine this in Daytona gray, matte, and black optics. So, this is not really a question, but I think that this car would look also sick in Daytona gray, Matt. Lupenzo, a long-time follower, is asking me, no regrets? I have to say, no, I have an RS5. How can I regret? I mean, RS5 will always be better than this one, especially diesel. K025L asks, exhaust sound compared to the 2018-2019 S5. You had already a glimpse of the exhaust sound in this specific video. Please go back to my old S5 videos to be able to compare both but I mean no comparison possible the petrol one is way better than this this one doesn't have any sound and the sound is generated from a resonator so it's not a real sound because diesel engine doesn't have sound I have Breezy the Great saying I have the US version of the 2020 S5B 9.5 and the exo sounds just like the B9. Yes, because you are lucky enough to still have the petrol engine. We don't. Adam Krolik, please cover engine exhaust sound and responsiveness turbo lag. Uh, I did it, so to summarize, it is a diesel, it has a Tiptronic gearbox, so of course you will experience some lag. Engine vibration in the cabin compared to the petrol engine. Uh, I have to say the engine is turned on, actually, because I need the AC, otherwise I'm gonna die, and uh, there's no vibration at all, and you barely hear the sound of the engine. And then I wanna give a special shout out to my longtime follower and friend, Audi TTS Quattro on Instagram. Instagram, Simon. Hi, Simon. Actually, he was the first one almost one and a half years ago saying that the new S model were going to turn diesel instead of petrol. A lot of people didn't believe him, but actually he was right. A good advice, if you are on Instagram, go follow Audi TTS Quattro. You get the latest and greatest news from Audi. You get stunning pictures and also the typical UK humor that I love a lot. Thank you, Simon. Don't hesitate to ask me questions on Instagram. I'm very reactive, maybe even too much reactive on Instagram. As soon as I get a message, I need to answer. I have to answer, but that's me. So the best way to keep in touch with me is on Instagram, Wiz1972. So there you go. I really hope I could convey what I really think about this car. Don't get me wrong, this car has a lot of good things that I would prefer compared to the previous generation, like the uh, virtual cockpit setup and the uh, touch screen, the bigger touch, touch screen. I prefer this setup to the one on the previous generation. If you take that away, then you, you have the exact same car. And also, if we talk about the MMI, uh, again, it is annoying not to have the, uh, the scroll wheel here and instead having this very small storage. They should have kept both, have the choice between going touchscreen or, if you are driving, 
maybe going more with the scroll wheel. But I guess we can't have it all. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and activate the notification bell so you won't miss a thing. I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.